Similar, similar, guys. Um, I've been talking to a lot of Gen Zs. Gen Zs, for those that don't know, are people that are born between 1997 and 2012. I think those are Gen Zs, yeah. Um, I've gotten a lot of DMs from Gen Zs just around challenges that they face. Yo, guys, yo, uh, uh. I know I shit on a lot of gents. I, I talk with you guys, me too, but uh, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor if you are a female. Try and find a machita who are between those ages and actually sit and talk to them. Really, 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 really sit and talk to them. Really try and understand the challenges that they are going through. As the, I'm a millennial. You know, um, and for us, we are kind of in between uh, this generation where it was like uh, always working hard. Tim uh, Zela, uh, that one that was loyal to the T. Uh, 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 uh. But we're also in between the Gen Zs where they are known to be. They don't work hard. They spoil. They entitled. They this. They that. And you sit with all these people. And then for me, I'm like, okay. One, who created this monster, if it is a monster, you know, is it the generation above us, the baby boomers or whatever it's called, uh, Gen X, whatever that, that generation above me is called. Did they create these entitled kids? Um, did they create these lazy kids? How? And if they are the ones that created them, then why are they the ones that are shitting on them and not giving those kids opportunities? Guys, when I speak to a lot of Gen Zs, they're struggling with employment. They struggle with employment. When I speak about them, they're struggling in relationships. You know, they, they're struggling to essentially find out who they are. They, they are lost in this maze of life, you know. And you're sitting there and I'm like, hey, bro, how can I help? How can I help? You know, Tina, we, we were raised in a specific way where there was a lot of traditional values. We were raised in certain ways where a lot of us got spanked. You know, it, was it wasn't illegal to spank a person in the 80s. Of course, in Ghana, it's illegal. Whereas in the later 90s, it became illegal. You know, we grew up in a, in a time where the teacher was right. The teacher was always right. Now people who are growing up in 1998, 2000, 2001, when they do something wrong, the parents come in and they actually engage with the teacher, you know, and they create this thing where the child is mollycoddled or the child is put around cotton wool, you know. So you as a parent raise your child in a specific way and then all of a sudden you 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 put them out in the, in the wild. Now Umfano Abandi is 25 years old and he doesn't know what the hell to do. He has no idea what he needs to do. And now he's no longer competing in the safe space of a school or university. Now he's competing against Jesus Christ. We, we did a podcast and I was chatting to this, this, this guy and he's like 26 years old. And he's talking about the dating pool, you know, and I'm listening to him and I'm listening and he's hitting it from a side that I've never engaged. So we'll drop that episode in, in a couple of weeks, but he's hitting it from a different side. He's hitting it from a side of, we now have to compete with you guys. We now have to compete with guys who are 35, 40. I'm 25. I'm struggling to get the, the high paying job that society expects me to have. You know, yes, I'm earning 12K. And at that level, so are my female peers. They also earning 12K. So we should be in the same space. However, they are weekend after weekend after weekend going out to these parties, going on these trips, buying these expensive stuff. Why? Because you guys in your 35s, 40s are actually going and you are supporting that lifestyle. Then on top of that, we are being compared constantly. We are being told we are lazy, but we can't find a job. We are told, ah, move out of your parents' home, live by yourself. Uh, how? How, dog? I've got a degree and no one's employing me because I don't have enough experience. I'm sitting at home with these qualifications, but don't know what my, my next step is. And when I do find a job, that job is giving me 8K, 10K. So how much is rent? How much is groceries? What do you expect from me when society is saying, I'm 25, I need to have a car, I need to have my own place, I need to have this, I need to have this phone, a dress like this, do da 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 How am I going to get all of that together with an 8K salary? I've got the degree, so clearly I'm not lazy. I've got the diploma, so clearly I'm not lazy. So talk to me. What is it that I need to do? Yes, I said, I'm sitting there, I'm going, fuck. You know, and our sisters don't give a fuck. Our sisters are trying to get the best that they can get. So sister, get what you need to get, you know? And the sisters will say, hey, I don't have a car, so why must I date a guy who doesn't have a car? We must walk so it too. I never. 
Pensi me lang namal, me lang hul 8,000. So why must I date another guy who nga namal? Pensi, I live with my mom, so I must date someone who also lives with his mom. So how are we going to link up? So they say, Woody, listen, I want the yin to my yang. I want the opposite to me. So if I'm struggling financially, I want a guy who can guide me and actually take me out of that financial poverty. If I am struggling in terms of this and this, I want a guy who's more developed. Blah, 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 blah. They, they say this and they say it confidently and they go and they get it. The 25-year-old guy doesn't get shit. We, we don't give a fuck. We really don't. Like, it, like men, men are so disposable, generally speaking. You know, even if you even if you go back to like times of war, you know, they'll they'll send men, go, 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 die, go, die, go, die, go, die. Purely because they know, Uti, all it takes is one man and a hundred women and we can repopulate. The, the opposite doesn't work. A hundred men, one woman. How, how many kids can she give you? Fifteen, maybe? How are you going to repopulate the like? I, I won't. So again, I heard a stat a couple of years ago. Don't quote me because I'm not too sure if it's 100% right or not. I heard a stat of 10% or, or of the entire world's population. Let me put it like that. Only 10% of men populated the world. What do I mean by that? I'm in a group where there's about 150 rugby guys. And of that group, only about 20 of us have kids. And if you break it down, those 20 guys that have kids, we have a collective of, let's say, 50 kids. So it'll be those 20 guys that repopulate like everyone and that happens time and time and if you look at it in, in in nature if you look at it like it's one line with like six lionesses and that one line is going to populate and 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 make all the lines that you, you understand so it's so crazy how men are so disposable no one gives a fuck you look at a guy who's 25 who doesn't have mm, okay whatever bye it's fine we'll chill with that guy who drives this and earns that and lives here and uh 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 yo I've been, I've been listening to these young kids. I've been listening to them and it, it, it's so heartbreaking because they grew up in a society where everybody is praised as a victim. When they were young, they grew up in a space where everybody's listening to them. Talk to me. Tell me your feelings, Josh. And they grew up like that. They grew up being heard. You know, as kids, they grew up, you know, someone, every time they cut themselves, the whole world would stop and focus on them. That's how they grew up. They, were, they, 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 they grew up like females, where everybody needs to be attentive. And if something wrong happens to them, we treat them as victims. That doesn't work when you're an adult. Men, men, the, the whole victimization of men, that doesn't exist. I men, men, victimhood doesn't apply for men. When, when you're 12, yeah. Maybe when you're 17, if, you, if your mom and your parents are still mollycoddling you, okay, shop. Once you hit to 25, victimhood doesn't work. It still works for our sisters. And so it should, because we need to protect them. And that's how you see, you know, I was, I was listening to these two teenagers, you know, having a, 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 a little, not debate, nyana, but a little back and forth banter. And... It was a male and a female. And I'm listening to this female who's about 15 saying to this, about 17 year old, oh, well, chivalry's dead. And I'm listening. And the 17 year old asks her, he's like, what's the female equivalent of chivalry? Chivalry being opening the door for a lady, chivalry being standing back, making sure what today, let's say there's a buffet of food and standing back and letting her you know, chivalry is taking your jacket off and giving it to a female if she's cold. Those type of things. Chivalry doesn't say that you're just doing that for your partner, or for your sister, for your mom. Chivalry is that you are doing that even for strangers. You know, when you leave an escalator, you know, you stand back and you hold the door for the female to go. That's chivalry. And, that, and a 17-year-old is asking this 15-year-old, Guti, what is the female equivalent of chivalry? And then she says to be a lady. And he goes, no, 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 no. You have a gentleman, you have a lady. A gentleman is chivalrous. A lady is what? What is she to strangers? What must she do to show that respect and admiration and, you know, being a good female or lady? What must she... And I'm listening and I'm going, bam! Because they grow up in a space where it's aggressively equality. It's aggressively men and women are exactly the same. What a man can do, a female can do, maybe even, even better. So they grow up in this world 
where everything is equal. We are so equal. We are so equal. We are so equal. And then they get into the world out there where there has been jobs open up just for females. There, if you go into the world of business, there's a business uh, bursaries. There is uh, grants. All just geared at females. Females, 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 females. These are people who are born in 1998 who were born into a space where everything was equal. They they knew that girls were great at maths. They knew that girls were great at English. They knew that girls were good at sport. They saw that from a young age. They didn't grow up like that generation of the 60s and the 50s where men had the upper hand in everything. They, 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 they didn't grow up in that. They grew up with single mothers who like raised their sons as they raised their daughters. They, they grew up in that space. So now you're in that space. Everything for you is equality, equality. Yes, you're hearing about this male privilege, this male privilege. You at age 13, you're like, what the fuck is this male privilege? I don't get it because when I go home, I need to wash the dishes. I need to wash my socks. I need to wash my shirts. I need to go home and cook. These are 13-year-old boys who are thinking like that. I, th I thought like that. So I went back home. I washed my socks. I washed my shirts. I made sure to Peggy. Where, where was this male privilege? Where, where, where was it? Where was it hiding? I had a baby sister. I had to wipe her nappy. I had to make sure that she's bought. I had to help getting her to school. Where's this no privilege that you guys are talking about? I can't see it anyway. I couldn't see it. And I'm a millennial. So imagine people who are born 10 years after me. Imagine being born in 1999. You're thinking around gender equality is so different. It's so different. And then you're thrown into the world where you realize, Wuti, this gender equality is like a buffet. People pick and choose when to be feminist. And now you're sitting in a place and you're like, look, I'm 25, earning 8K. My peer, my colleague, is also 25, earning 8K. Surely we should match up. We both interns, we both come. Surely we should match up. Bam, bam, bam. Only to find out, no, there's no equality. She's not looking for your uh, average. No, she's not. She's looking for, she earns 8K. For her, the equivalent to that is the guy who earns 25K. Then she'll start listening. She's walking. An equivalent is a guy who at least has a polo. That's the equivalent. And these 25 year olds are just like stuck. They're like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know where to go. I have no idea. You know, and then you have Buma Andrew Tate or my Jordan Peterson who are trying to change a narrative because they live in a world where it's, they, they are being discouraged to be, to be men. You know, I've taught at a school before and I'd listen to teachers discouraging boys to be boys. What do I mean by boys being boys? By being hyper, by being testosterone driven, by being, uh, um, what's, this, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, inquisitive. Boys are hyper in nature. It's just what it is. No, discourage. Give him some Ritalin. Give him some Concerta. He's got ADHD. No, he's hyper because Ngambela, he's a boy. No, he's got attention deficit because what you're teaching him is boring. He doesn't know how to sit down, cross his legs, rule off, underline in different colors. He doesn't know that. But he doesn't have ADHD. You are just watching him saying he's hyper. No, he's a boy. Let him be a boy. Let him go play. Let him go climb a tree. Let him fall and break something. That's what we go through. That's how we explore. And that's how we get into our madness. Men take risks. Men are there being courageous. They are there as, as the founders. They are there as the pioneers. But if you break that down from a young age, then you put these Gen Zs into the world. What are they to do? What are these young men to do? Daily, daily, I get tons and tons of DMs and it's the same age group over and over and over and over again. And it's almost as if this guy, guys came and cut off their dicks from the back. I'm like, what the hell? They are discouraged to being men. Now they're trying to piece this world together. So they start to gravitate towards an Andrew Tate or gravitate towards a Kevin Samuels or gravitate to anything that exudes testosterone, exudes masculinity. Because again, they are lost. And then they get judged for that. Oh, I can't believe you like Andrew Tate. Oh, I can't believe that you like Bun Bun. I can't believe... Then they get judged for wanting to be at least more masculine than they currently are. Yo, guys, no, man. And the sad reality is that the only advice that I can give to Amachita is to try and better yourself. Like, there's nothing I can say beyond that. And you guys have to jump through a thousand different hoops just for you to be able to show the smallest little thing of improvement. No, you have to do a thousand push-ups a day for the next thousand days. Then all, all of a sudden, from a physical point, we will then deem you manly. You need to save of your 8,000 rand. You need to save 7,000 rand and then live under a bridge for the next three years so that you'll have enough money at least to tell a little more time to do. Hey, Machita, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just venting on the behalf of guys who are 10 years younger than me. Um, maybe we should 
we should start doing more lives or something along those lines where people start engaging um, like this, what the challenge is. And then have sisters here. Because when I chat to these guys, a lot of it is like, look, I know I'll still grow career-wise. I know I'll still get there. But unfortunately, I also need some sort of companionship. And I'm 26 now. And I'm just thinking, Guti, as things go along this way, the only time I can look up, I'll be 30. And then maybe I'll have my little one-bedroom flat. Maybe I'll be driving my little golf one. Then I can start knocking on 21-year-old stores, 22-year-old stores. Because again, when I look at my 30-year-old peers, they are with 45-year-old guys. They've already got two kids. They've already got... They are Porsche Cayenne. They're already living in a four-bedroom house. They too far. They they are. Yo. <sighs> Young kings. Keep pushing, eh? Unzima, man. Unzima, gunzima, gunzima, gunzima. But keep pushing, keep pushing. Anyway, guys, please just comment on how you feel about this matter. Um, if you're a sister and I didn't touch on sisters things, talk. Tell me how it feels to be a Gen Z. Tell me how it feels to be a millennial, whatever the age bracket that you fall in and your challenges. And teach us something, you know, because I tend to, and I put my hand up because I know I'm at fault many times. I tend to be very, very aggressive at uh, this blame game type of thing, you know. Um, but the sad reality is that we are all going through change, uh, challenges and we are all going through different seasons uh, uh, of life. But anyway, share this video. Hit that subscription button and that uh, notification bell and have yourselves a fantastic day and thunder.